ever embrace all creatures live, in whatsoever world or condition they be. I beseech thee from for him whose name and dwelling place, and every need thou knowest. Lord, light and rest, and peace and refreshment, joy and consolation, in paradise and in companionship of the saints, in the presence of Christ, in ample souls. It's a little sprat again. As pale as a fish's belly. And those eyes. He's only lost in the world, that's all. And what would you be in a strange land without a mother's touch? A drunkard. You're already that. Jim, wake up, will you? It's your daughter. How are you, girl? She's worn out, Jim. Open your eyes. She looks as if she's raised in a tin box. Fresh air. That's a ticket. A little sprat like her breathing the poison fumes as air in this town. I have to take her to the country. There's no work to be had at home. And we're never going back to the island. That's done. A lemon squash for you, dear. It isn't a place to be raising a girl around here. I do my best. You try, bless you. Why not send her off to her grandfather's place then? You'd like that, wouldn't you, lad? You'd like that, living with the old people. Later. Father had to put me on the morning boat. You climbed all this way up by yourself. It's great to see you. Your grandmother saw you below. She nearly had a fit. She knew it was me. With that head of hair, a double the distance. I'd know you were a Keneally. And your father and his brother the same. Oh, but for Jimmy, he seemed the dark one. I'd better not mention anything about Jamie in front of Grandmother. She's getting the tea ready for you now. Oh, look at your arms, dear. Like sticks they are. Eat up now. I see here she's needing. 
Sure, I hear you can't find a proper hen's egg in that city. But the ones here is nothing compared to what was laid on the island. Oh, you and that island. That's true enough, though. Since her own cow only gave half the milk she gave in Roninish. Look, what's done is done, and there's no use moaning over it. Why did we have to leave? It was the young people, dear. Like your father and his brothers. They were restless on the island, and then came the war and jobs across the sea, and now as they have the taste of the city in their blood. Ah, city indeed. Nothing but noise and dirt and people that's lost their senses. Couldn't tell the difference between a rip tide and a raindrop if you shoved their face in the water. But you and Grandmother. Oh, no. We couldn't start up from naught, living alone on an island. There isn't a thing out there for us but sad memories. Can you see it from here? The sky is willing, some can. Look out there. You see a lighthouse on a long, flat island. I think I do. Then, beyond there to your right, a great island of dark hills. And there's a wee green bit of an iron line between them. She sees it, Tess. Ah, you put it into her head. She sees it. Only them that's born to the islands can see it from this distance. They say the east is our future and the west is our past. The islands to the west of us, Hugh. That's Roan Inishgarn, island of the seals. And there's more of them now because the people have deserted. You've been out there. Once a week if the current's right. God bless all here. Eamon, get in and sit for tea. You remember him, Fiona? Your cousin Eamon, Uncle Patrick's boy. Hello. So you've moved back to the west? Are you pleased? Oh, yes, I'm well pleased. How come you never left with your family? I tried it for a month, then I ran back here. I'm not clever enough to live in town. Too fast for me. This is as good a young fellow in the curra as ever I've seen. Oh, no. Love of the sea is a sickness. And you two will come to grief for it. Eat. She's seen Roan in a on her first look. Is that so? Do you go there too? I've not set foot there since the evacuation. But Grandfather knows the shoals all about it. And what feeds there and when. You always come back with a full net. When the rest of them are scared to fish it. Why are they scared? Eamon. Oh. Tales is all. Tales of what? If it clears up this evening, they might see the light again. Light? There's an end on it. A lot of nonsense and superstition in my house. Here, come on, do your duty by those cakes, Eamon. They won't keep. Your grandfather's already filled his gullet. sea gives and the sea takes away. This is my father's father's father now. Keneally man. And he was only a few years older than you are now. His name was Sean Wakel. Smart boy, dark haired, bit of the rebel in him. Though times weren't as hard on the island as they were on the mainland, it's never easy pulling a living from the sea. The English were still a force in the country then. They had the schools. It was their language and their ways that you had to learn there. Or else. There was a new schoolmaster in the school one year. As stiff as a cat's whiskers he was. And Sean Weichel wasn't a weak in his class before he put a singulum about his neck. It was a punishment of those days for speaking Irish within his earshot. John Weichel stuck it for as long as he could, for he had a strength of character. But the shame was too great, and he tore it from his neck, and he went for the schoolmaster and began to beat on the man, crying out, Ni meshit the asla and the galda! I sus the hone! You, please. It's a little girl. understand 
to get Garrett. I don't have any Irish. More's the pity of it. Aye. Now, Sean Michael's father had great hopes for the boy, clever as he was, that he would learn to read the Englishman's language and study his laws and grow to be a leader for his people. But there was his son, knuckles bloody, anger in his heart, standing before him. You'll need to kill me to make me go back, he says. His father sighed then and looked out to the sea beyond them. You'll have nothing now, he said, but the black rocks and the wild waves and the hard sky above you. And wasn't it his first right trip out with his father that a fierce storm from the north blew over them? Sean Wakel, his father, his brothers, his uncles and his cousins, four boats in all, and it took them in its terrible grip and lifted them high and turned them over and slapped them back down into the violent black sea with the scraps of their curls around them. His father caught in their net and dried below without a whisper. Out as far as they were in a northern storm, an experienced fisherman would swallow his draught of water and swim to the bottom. For to fight the cold sea is only to prolong your suffering. But John Michael was green with it. And he flailed and he cried out and he beat the water with his legs and arms till the sea grew to hate him and refused to swallow him up. Full days later, when people gathered muscles on the strand, found him. And there was some was even afraid to touch him. But it was women mostly, soft-hearted as they are. The boy was more dead than alive, cold as ice to the touch. And there wasn't a fire in Ireland could bring the blood of life back into him. This is the time when the country people still lived with their beasts inside. And the woman has owned the house they brought him to said, Here, bind them up to my cow. And then she brought another alongside, and their heat went out through him. And soon he began to shiver, and then he began to shake, and then he slept like a Christian for hours and hours. When he started to sweat, the woman cut him loose from her animals, and they bathed him, and wrapped him in blankets warmed in the heart. faces above him, all women and girls. Is this heaven then, he said. No, lad, said the woman of the house. It's only Chat Din. Now, Chat Din is the islands where the people thought that the souls of all Ireland's dead were held to rest. And so, Sean Michael believed he had drowned and come to the hereafter. It was a seal that brought me here, he told them. I was sinking under, destroyed by the effort of keeping my head above the swell. And a body, warm body, came under me and lifted me up. It was a sea from the field inside. A great dark sea that bore me along through the storm and I hugging its neck. That's all I remember. I woke to you faces of And now, with his father and brothers and uncles and cousins all gone, there's only Sean Michael left to keep the Canelies alive in these islands. And you saved by sea? And two cows. And a woman has had her wits about her. It's a wonderful story. There's some think so. And there's some say they should never save a drowning man. What the sea will take, the sea must have. That's a lot of foolishness, Hugh. It's said that some that are saved turned wicked afterwards. What happened to Sean Michael, your great-grandfather? 
jailed by the English. Died in prison, a man of fifty. Smuggling arms to the Fenians, he was. Well, that's enough for now. Take the child to bed, Hugh. She's exhausted. <sighs> Sweet dreams, dear. Superstitious old man. this fire as the pure Christ reeks us all. Mary at the foot and Bridget at the head. And may the eight brightest angels from the city of grace preserve this house and all its people to the coming of the day. Out into the sun with you now. You'll find him below on the strand. Just follow the path across. Just wishing I had someone to lend me a hand. Be great help to me. You just kept stirring the tar in this bucket here. I love it. The olden times, people used cowhide on their curls. Then it was calico. Now we make do with canvas. The tar is what it always was. Some tea, dear. Yes, please. Down the next mug for you. There. I think you saw the light last night. Light is it? What light might that be? The one Aaron spoke of. I'm going in it. Huh? There's plenty of things could be taken for a light in the dark. And no telling how far off they might be. You just want me to forget about Jimmy. Well, none of us forget him, dear. But life goes on. I can't even remember when we lost him. I was already off in the ship when it happened. It was a strange day. Everyone on the beach for the evacuation. The air was very still, like it is sometimes before a storm. It's like a dream that day. Slow, terrible dream that you watch. You can't stop it. All the people had rode out and most of the goods. There's only your father and brother ashore. 
Wee Jamie. Sleeping in his cradle. In his cradle? Aye. Pulled up on the beach. Coming by. I don't know how the cradle could have made up so much speed. The sea had taken him, poor wee Jamie. As if it was angry with us for leaving Rowan Inish. Mind that tar, love, or it'll be stiffer than an old man in a winter's night. He could still be out there. Jamie, alive. And cows could have wings, dear. Cows could have wings.
You see this? It's a sea rented open. A terrible rascals for stealing fish. There's one staring at me from the rock when I come in. Maybe he's fell in love. Got to be careful though. There's one day a year, all the seals gather to choose their new king. And it said, whichever of the island girls he fancies most, is taken below to live as his queen. That's just stories. Some stories is true though. Grandfather told me about Jimmy. About when he was taken. Did he tell you the rumours? By what? Stem who claimed to have seen him. Little Jamie. Sail in the seas in his cradle boat. What do they say he looks like? They say he's grown into a fine little gossip. Sitting in the stern of his cradle, like a captain in his ship. Always there's creatures of him. Seals swimming in the water. Great crowd of seagulls squawking overhead. If you call out or try to come closer, he vanishes. Great splash in the water and flapping the wings. Like a phantom, they say. Where do they see him? Coming back from the far side of the island. Close to Rowan Inch. Grandfather! Shh! And I told you nothing. What is it? Can I go out with you sometimes? In your boat? It'll be a few days before the tide is dried. Then will you? Well, I have to ask your grandmother first. She won't have you out on a boat unless the day is fine. See something. See that little fella there? It's his first year at sea. He's the one. He's the one that stared at me from the boat coming over. I'm sure he is. He was the one I saw. He really did remember me. Hide your face then. We'll be after taking you for a wife. Don't scare the child. The owner's never scared. Are you, girl? His name is Jax. And how do you know that? It just is, that's all. There it is. Rowan in it. Aye. Isn't it beautiful? there at that end. Tess and I were next door. And ours was one beyond. Right. We'll set those pots and we'll be back. Don't wander too far.
wish you could talk to me. Let me go while the tide's still with us. Do you miss Gridley? Roll in it. That's only a place, I suppose. Most thing I miss is the way of life. It's surrounded by the sea. The whole family about you. I'm moving back. <laughs> when I'm a man. A sorry sight out there on your own. Haunting the island, all on your loads. Oh, no, I love a wife. Look at she have you, Eamon. Not many women these days see much romance and hard work and solitude. I'm moving back just the same. Remember the evening's best. We drop over. Your mother, God bless her, be laying out food. Father smoking, drying his feet by the fire. And then you, Fiona, will be Jamie, off of the corner, low pieces of dinnerware. Tea parties it was. Always a great one for the tea parties. Someone's been in our old cottage. Vandals, is it? No. Someone is living there. Don't be daft. And I saw a footprint. A footprint of a little boy. Why didn't you show it to us then? We have destroyed it. Fiona, there's all sorts of things can look like a footprint in the shore. I saw it. I did. So you saw the island today? Yes. And the houses are in a terrible state, I suppose. They weren't so bad with a little bit of cleaning. Yeah. If you're idle for a week, nature takes it back. There'll be birds nesting in the thatch and the chimney. Creepy crawly things in every corner. It wasn't so bad. Our old cottage looked as if we left it a day ago. The sand and everything. Blowing off the beach. It was clean, though. In the mornings. And the mist on the water. We could move back. Grandfather said it's the best fishing. Oh, child, I couldn't think of it. I've only the picture in my mind of your poor little brother floating away. The only real tragedy in life is young people passing on before their time. I always remember his eyes. Dark they were. There was a great soul behind them. Oh, he was here before. One and a quarter pounds to the green. You're a mean penny pinching creature, Flynn. Fiona, darling, you have your purse. Is this the granddaughter, then? It is. She isn't one of the dark ones, is she? Mind your own business, Flynn. 
You wait here, darling, while I go and fetch your grandfather. I could get him. I'll not have a young girl exposed to the layabout to spend their days in that pub. You call this fresh, do you? You ought to be ashamed. She's the original tough customer. Old Tess. What's dark ones? Eh? Hey? You said before that it wasn't a dark one. Haven't they told you? Told me what? Come along, then. There's an example for you. I could be your father's first cousin. Once in a generation, the Keneally spit out a dark one. Like my brother Jimmy? Aye. Tiger would be the one ahead of him. Will he know me? You can talk to me if you like. But there's no saying if you'll talk back. He's a bit special, if you know what I mean. Full of shoe polish and it's leaking. Get off out of you! Easy, take. The Keneally's first came to Rowan Inish. It was still only Irish spoken on the islands. They built their meager homes on the beach, and the seals and the birds moved aside to make room for them. There's only a few families and all related. So when it came time to find a mate, it was elsewhere you had to look. There was a boy among them, Liam, who always preferred to be alone. He set his own traps, built his own car, and sat alone at all the family gatherings. One day, walking out around the outer islands, he saw a thing his eyes could scarce believe. In them days, seals was hunted for their oil and hides, clumped to death and made into coats and pouches and pamputis for the feet. But Liam never took part in it, for he believed, as many did then, that there was no worse luck than to harm a seal. Liam had seen a selkie, a creature that's half a half beast. Old stories told of such creatures luring ships onto the rocks and pulling sailors down into the drink. But all Liam knew was he'd never seen a woman so lovely in all his life. was said that whoever could capture the hide of a selkie would have it in their power to command 
as they would. The Selkie maid had seen men before, fled from their fishing hooks and their spears and mattocks, but never had she seen one as glorious handsome as Liam Keneally. Islanders had seen Liam row out to sea alone. And now all saw his return with the strange girl. Island people is a careful lot. Not likely to pass judgment on another person's business in public. There was something so unearthly about the girl that soon set their tongues to wagging. There was much shaking of heads when Liam married the stranger. She hardly spoke at all, and when she did, her Irish was queer some. More ancient than her grandfather's grandfather's. And when they asked him where he'd found her, with her great dark eyes and her wild black hair, he'd only say, Trabeg. Of course, this was nonsense, as it was only a speck in the ocean that even the seals had to leave when the tide was high. And she'd always be at the water, looking out at the seals and the birds. And she'd come back each day with her hands full of shellfish and seaweed, which she'd simmer over a driftwood fire in a manner all her own. had to admit that she was a good wife for their Liam. And before long, she was asking him to build a cradle for their firstborn. It must be made at the wood of a ship that sailed the ocean, she told him. And there'll be no need for rockers, for it will rock on the motion of the sea. And it was the queerest looking thing. More of a ship than a cradle. And carved with shells and fish and seaweed. Whenever the day was calm, then they put the babe afloat on the water, rocking on the sea, with the ripple of the waves against the hull for a lullaby. Now the years passed, and Liam and Nula, for that's what the Selkie called herself, was happy in their work, and their love grew, and they had many children. With all that, was always a touch of sadness about Nula. And she spent long hours looking out at that that she'd come from and listening to the cries of the seals on the outer islands. One of these afternoons, it was her eldest, who was called Fiona, said the words to her that changed it all. Kayam fa go will cotta leather i wallach ig maher since cracky. Why does father hide a leather coat? Later that evening, as Liam was rowing home, he was followed by a solitary sea. It seemed joyous in its movements. It rolled and dived within the waves, joyous in the sleekness of its body. But its eyes, as with all its kind, Sadness as deep as the soul. The seal left him at last. Liam felt a great emptiness inside, a fear. 
He rode furious for the shore, even though the sea was heavy on his oars. When he got home, it was the faces of his children told him his fears were true. For once a selkie finds its skin again, neither chains of steel nor chains of love can keep her from the sea. From that day on, it was forbidden to harm a seal on the island. And man and beast lived side by side, sharing the wealth of the sea. And sometimes the Canadians would see her out in the waves, basking in the sun on Trebek, watching them, watching her children. And the cradle was passed on through the years with each new infant of the Canelis rocked upon the waves within it. And every so often, there'd be one born with the dark eyes and the black hair that the Selkie had left in her blood. And these dark ones were most at home at sea. Great sailors and fisher folk, every one of them. Like Tiger, he's an admiral in the Royal Navy. Fiona, get out from there. Your grandfather's ready. strange, maybe. He always has been. He was a sailor for a little while. Up to savage islands in the east. Places a Christian man would do well to avoid. Did he upset you? Oh, no. He's very pleasant. Well, now you're not to mind anything he says to you. Poor fellow doesn't know if he's wide awake or dreaming. Your grandfather and I have to go over to Killy Beggs tomorrow to deal with the landlord. Would you like to come? Or maybe go to the Eamon. He has to deliver a parcel for the postman out among the smaller islands. I'd like to go with him. Well, if the weather holds and you dress warm. He's a troubled soul, Ty Keneally. It's as if he's caught between earth and water. Just four fingers above the horizon. You'll be ready and waiting. I promise. And if the weather turns foul? I'll go into the cottage and wait for you. I promise. And you remember where there's water? I do. If any harm comes to you, they'll have me head. I'll be careful. All right, then.
on time. So I'm today. So who? Jimmy. Sure you did. I did. I went into the cottage and made a fire and fell asleep and turned for the stocky woman. And when I woke, I climbed to the top of the island and I saw that seal. The little one that's been watching me. And then I was walking and he was there. Jimmy, picking flowers. But he ran from me. Before I could reach him, he was gone. Gone where? In his cradle. He sailed away around the rocks. Just talk of spirits out here, you know. He wasn't a spirit. He's a little boy. I saw the flowers he pulled up. He dropped them when he ran. Can a spirit do that? You've got to believe me. I saw him. I do believe you. But you mustn't tell our grandparents about what happened today. You weren't even supposed to be out here. But if they knew... They'd only think you were dreaming it all. Let me think about it. We'll come up with a plan. Agreed? Agreed. Good evening, Grandfather. Grandfather? What's wrong? Oh, there you are, dear. What is it? You know, we don't own this house. Well, the landlord says he got a letter today from some wealthy people overseas who wants a place to summer in. A gold mine, he called it. Where will you go? Inland, I suppose. There's nothing available here. Oh, it was bad enough your grandfather having to come in off the island, but to take him away from the sea. I'm fearing his spirits will fail him. You can't do that. It isn't fair. It's the times, darling. After a war, people is always ready to cut off the past and go forward. We're just the ones left behind us all. Oh, that's not your worry, Fiona, darling. Your shoulders is too narrow to be carrying all of that. Mackerel won't see us coming, then. It's not fish I'm talking about. We can't take this wee one out, with dirty weather coming up. Oh, it'll clear, you'll see. So you're an expert now, are you? I'm sorry, but your grandmother would never forgive me if you took a chill. You'll see nip of grey water in a day like this, anyway. It's for the best. And be careful now. Climbing up to the house. Wait, your sandwiches. Grandfather? Eamon? Jax, is that you? Are you still there? Hello, is anybody out there? 
what's happening. Where are we going? Would you come ashore with me?
run for me? Almighty Fiona, we worried sick about you. I sat in the boat and I broke free. A sea just came from out of the fog. And I looked and looked, but he wasn't there. There's was smoke in the chimney and Jamie was inside. Having tea with a little seal. But then they ran away. She's gone crazy with some kind of fever. I'm not sick. Well, how did you get out here then and slow this time? In the boat. It drifted. There's no oars in it, Grandfather. And look at this. He set a table inside, with shells and all. You can see it. Someone playing tricks on us, and it might be you. I don't lie. I believe her, Grandfather. It's the madness that runs in the family. He's in the cradle, and there's always scenes about. That's from talking to that tag, isn't it? He put all this into your head. But, Grandfather... Not another word now. Can I get in that car? And I need silence. Think up some likely excuse for your grandmother. <sighs> Sales and date. Oh, good morning to you. Good morning. Where's grandfather? Well, he's already into the pub this morning. And he'd be less likely to come out, as it was a black mood he left with. I gave him hard with my tongue for taking you out yesterday. Nothing bad happened. Do you know if Amos can out in the motorboat today? Well, it doesn't matter whether he is or not. You're not going with him. There's no need of the bleak ocean for catching a dose of fresh air, darling. One day ashore won't kill you now, will it? No, ma'am. So have you seen him? Why does he run from me? Where do you choose him? My brother. He's lost out there. Uh, he isn't lost at all. He's just with another branch of the family. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know whether to believe you or not. People say you're daft. Uh, they have their reason. Have you ever seen him? Have you ever seen Jimmy? Well, I may be daft, girl. But 
I'm not blind. Fisherman's bend. Right. Got to get them to move back. I don't see how. They're going to lose their house here. Nobody's been on the island for years. It's derelict with weeds. The cottages has fallen to ruin. Oh, Lang, cottages aren't so bad. I've been in them all. And didn't you say you planned to move back yourself? Well, I'm a man. What's to stop you now? Grandmother will be the hard nugget. She worries awful about our grandfather's health. Carrick Bend. She'd move back with Jamie, though. The minute she would. But then that's caring for him. Won't let him back till they see we've returned. I'm sure of it. You've been speaking with the seals, have you? Eamon, we can start with the cottages, fixing them up. What do you think? I'll meet you here with Kenny Minion's boat in the morning. I'll say we're off digging clams. Pull this for a deal. Riley's not. Chase. Come on then.
have tipped them away and all spilled out. Do you think that's what happened? Not for a moment. And how did the muscle gathering go today? Oh, we worked wonders with them, didn't we, Fiona? It was hard work. You'll be careful not to overtax yourself. No, no, it's ever so good for me. Look at my muscles. Well, it's improved your appetite anyway. You came in here as though the hunger of the world was on you. <laughs> We should plant some things up here. When we move back, there'll be time. We'd better start back, Fiona. The tide won't wait.
Professor? Your mother is it? Where did she come from? Since your father told you that. He doesn't like to speak of her. She came from Valley Buffet back in the mainland. Traveling the hills in search of a meal and a place to sleep. He was poor. Her father with no livelihood, only his day's pay. Seldom he had even that. Well, they say the only true wealth is land. Like we own and own Ennis. For all the good it does us. Not quite, Hugh. Jimmy, your father, was my youngest and the dearest to my heart. Oh, but he was an airy boy. Bone lazy at times, and at others you'd never find a worker as keen as him. Like night and day was, depending on the mood that struck him. Camp it away his head on a young body. She was in Donegal town one day for the pilgrimage on St. Bridget's Day, which was her namesake. Sixteen years of age. Beautiful, strong Christian girl. Oh, sun or stars never shone on a better one. I loved her like a daughter. Our Bridget. My father was there. We had a brilliant run on the mackerel that year. A great patch of them shoaling up behind the island. And our men were barely able to dip their nets in the water fast enough. Your father and Matt Morgan had gone off to the mainland to try and sell what they'd left over. The first time he laid eyes on Bridget, she was leaving the church. And he was struck speechless with the sight of her. It was the shyness of an island boy. And she wasn't a worldly girl at all. But to Jimmy, any place off her own in a might have been Paris, France. <laughs> so there he is, making honey in his heart of her good looks. And meanwhile, she's just as struck. With him, a big, handsome, powerful lad, with eyes that melted all the girls. And she's in a hundred pieces, wondering what she could do to meet him. Did he speak to her? What did he say? Would you like to buy some fish, miss? <laughs> <laughs> and she said she'd love to, as she'd never tasted fish from the salty ocean in all her life. But she hadn't a shilling to her name to buy it with. They fell into talking then. Great with each other immediately, as happens with the young. Remember the day she came, sitting in the back of the car. And I says to Tess, will you look at the prize Matt Moggins brought back from Donegal? No, she says. For look at how Matt's got his eyes straight ahead at the island. And as our Jimmy is own, so he won't let her out of his sight. That day, Jim had the name of a steady husband and a hard worker. As fine as any that ever broke bread. She grew to love the island, our Bridget. She was the last one to marry on her own Inish. And the last one to die in it. He always blamed himself for bringing her into the life of the sea. Life can be hard in the mainland, too. Your hands is getting rough. Pull in the muscles that does it. Look at them claws, will you? Got them for a right blow tonight. Got to be hell's own fury for any creature caught without shelter. Hope Jimmy comes in. What's that you're saying? Say it, I hope Jimmy comes in, out of the storm. What can you mean by that? I've seen him, Grandmother. Ah, she just dreamed him up, sleeping one day in her own inish. A wish can be a powerful thing. I saw him, once on a hillside picking flowers, and once in the cottage having tea with a seal. Yeah. I'm not imagining it. I've seen him. He was without a stitch, and then he nipped away in his little cradle boat. It's the seals that's been looking after him. The seals, is it? It's the truth, Grandmother. Well, it is. Get it down for me, love. Cass. Oh, and Fiona, put the chickens in their coop like a good girl, will you? Is she all right? 
Well, that's got there. Well, you don't want to sleep out there on the cold ground now, do you? Did you look at that sky? I can read a sky as well as you. There's a storm coming, and it's no weather to be leaving a small boy outside in. I knew he wasn't gone from us. Holy Mother, I felt it all along. Now hurry on, will you? I'll get the lantern. They say the Keneally's is the bad one. Fiona got to. I need her to help gather seaweed for soup. Yes. You look what they've done. Oh, bless us, sweet Jesus. Now, this is a soup as only the women of Rowan English knows how to make. She learned it from my mother. Not to go to her. Who got it from hers? Who got it from hers before that again? All the way back to the first Cunnilis. They learned it from the dark woman, from Nula. There's some as tells it like that. Yes. You're out in dirty weather. It's like the lifeblood flowing back into your veins. It's part of the... like bone of a whale. Jimmy brought it in. Right. You young ones did a great job in this touching. And it'll have its test in a few minutes. To say it's wind, Grandfather. Aye. They are often the most fierce. Jamie. Poor little soul.
entnimmt. Jamie boy. Love his little heart. He's hungry. Why did you live right there? Would you cheat? I wouldn't think he could answer you, Fiona. I'll teach you to talk. And I'll tell you stories. And your friends that have been looking after you can see you any time they like. Fiona's to thank for finding you, Jamie boy. She gave me a word. I just wouldn't believe it. But when you look at us, back in Rowan Inish. It's like breathing fresh air after being three years underground. Do you remember me, Jimmy? Your sister Fiona? Fiona? I was destroyed with the excitement. At least you'll sleep warm tonight. 